So you're thinking about moving to Dayton, Ohio, and you don't know where you're gonna live. Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we're gonna unpack the five best suburbs to live in in Dayton, Ohio. And we use five different metrics to determine and rate these suburbs. Number one is we use schools, right? Schools are important, especially if you have children or property values are important to you. Number two, we used affordability, right? Can I afford to live in a certain suburb? What is the average home sale price? Number three is available inventory. How many homes are available in a certain area? Will I be able to find what I'm looking for? Number four is the proximity to shopping, restaurants, and entertainment. Number five is overall buyer demand. Right? And people want to live in this area. That's important for property values as well. How many homes have sold in the last 12 months? So in today's video, we're going to unpack all those things. So sit back and let's dig right in. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Dayton, Ohio, make sure and hit the subscribe button below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Dayton. My name is Mike Wall. My team and I get calls and emails every single day from people just like you looking to make the move to Dayton. We absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine days or 90, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom call in the description below. We'd be happy to help you make the smooth move to Dayton. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And just to give you some context here, um, I didn't rate these in any particular order. Uh, these are all great communities uh, and they all serve their purpose. And the reason why I didn't do that is because everybody has unique needs. Everybody looks for something out of a particular suburb or, or community. And certainly I can't dictate that for you, only educate you. So that's what this video is intended to do. And again, those metrics that we used um, are the schools, right? Um, the schools rating on the state report card. We also used available housing, right? That's important to you. Um, proximity to shopping, entertainment, and restaurants, and then overall buyer demand, as well as affordability. And so those are the, the five metrics that we use to rate these particular suburbs. So we're gonna start with Kettering. Um, Kettering is the first one we're, we're going to discuss. And I brought it over to the map just to kind of give you an idea of where everything is located in relation to the city of Dayton. And um, certainly I'll point some things out here for you as we go through. Uh, you can see Kettering is right here. The city of Dayton is right here. So um, if you do work downtown, uh, it is a very uh, close commute if you live in Kettering to go uh, into downtown Dayton. Um, but let's start out with Kettering and I'll give you a better idea of Kettering. Uh, so we're gonna type Kettering in here and we'll take it right into Kettering proper. And as you can see, uh, here is the outline of the city of Kettering. And another city we'll discuss is Oakwood, uh, which you can see uh, borders Kettering. They're very close to each other. Uh, but this is Kettering here. So the, the great thing about Kettering is they do have an A- minus on the state's report card. They have an 83% graduation rate. There's 8,000 students in the district, and there's an 18 to 1 student to teacher ratio, which is really good, um, especially if you compare that to where I live in Springboro. It's really, really good. So you can see the affordability in the the city of Kettering is also very good. Uh, the average home sale price in the city of Kettering is $201,000. Um, one thing to keep in mind about the city of Kettering, and there's not a ton of new housing. Most of the city of Kettering was built out, I would say, between 1940 and 1970. So a lot of the houses are of an older type of architecture. Um, so if you like newer housing, um, there is, is some newer housing in Kettering, but again, there's not a lot. So that's one thing you probably want to consider is if you want newer housing, you may want to move out to some of these other communities that we'll discuss a little bit later on in the video today. So the available housing inventory right now, as of this morning, well, first of all, there's 26,000 properties, residential properties in the city of Kettering. And as of this morning, there were 33 properties available, um, which is obviously very low, but sign of the times, right? We're in a very challenging market for buyers. However, we are definitely, I think, bucking the trend as it relates to helping our our buyers find and negotiate great deals on properties here in Kettering and, and many of these other suburbs. So keeping that in mind, um, proximity to shopping and entertainment, I would give it an A plus. 
Kettering is, is very centrally located. So if, if you do like the downtown area, as you saw before, you're very close to downtown. Also, another thing to keep in mind is the Green. There's a shopping center here called the Green, where you'll see also there's a lot of great restaurants. And there's a lot of great shopping and theater, just a lot to do. And Kettering is very uh, centrally located to the Green, which is, is obviously gonna be enticing for those of you who like to go out and do things and find the green here for you. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and show you where that's at. So this is the green right here. And you can see lots of restaurants, right? Here's the, the, the movie theater and then all, some of the shops. That is right in the heart of Kettering. The green is actually located in uh, Beaver Creek, but Beaver Creek and Kettering also border each other. Beaver Creek is one of the communities that we'll discuss a little bit later uh, in this video. But um, again, I give Kettering an A plus as it relates to its proximity to shopping, entertainment, restaurants. Overall buyer demand in Kettering is also very high. Uh, in the last 12 months, there was over a thousand properties that sold and that's especially good given the fact that you know we are in a limited inventory marketplace so uh, Kettering again is the first community we're discussing obviously it's showing up on our list because uh, it does rate so highly in all of these different categories the next community I want to discuss um, is the community that I talked about a little bit earlier in this video and it's Oakwood which you can see is right here and you can see also, I'm gonna use my tool again to show you Oakwood. Oakwood is here and you can see city of Dayton is right here. So again, if you're working in or close to downtown Dayton, Oakwood is a good location for you to be. I'll tell you a little bit more about Oakwood. We're gonna clear some of this out and then I will actually show you the Oakwood boundaries Then talk a little bit about the Oakwood community. I'm gonna go over here in Oakwood and you'll see our Oakwood boundary, right? Um, Oakwood's not very big. Uh, Oakwood um, is a is a special community in that it is centrally located. It probably has one of the most highly rated school systems, not just Montgomery County, all of Ohio. In fact, if you go to the niche website where I pulled the school's information, you can see, I believe it's one of the top 10 schools in the state of Ohio. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It's an A plus on the state's report card, a 92% graduation rate, 2,100 students. So it's really small. That's 2,100 students in the entire district um, with a 17 to one student to teacher ratio. Affordability is a little higher. Uh, the average home sale price in Oakwood is 365. 5,000 and there are only 3,500 residents in all of Oakwood. As of this morning, there were only 17 properties for sale. One thing to keep in mind about the Oakwood housing market is Oakwood is very unique in that it's a very tight knit community and people either love it or they hate it. I'm not one. I see the allure of the Oakwood community, but it is not my style of housing. I love it and appreciate the houses in Oakwood. I just, I wouldn't want that for myself, but I understand why people do want it. Um, there's a lot of charm. There's a lot of nostalgia, I think, associated with living in Oakwood. Most of the housing there, again, uh, was built in the early 1900s, early to mid 1900s. In fact, it was built out before Kettering for the most part. And a lot of people want to live in Oakwood, number one, because the schools are rated so highly. Again, there's just an allure or a stigma with living in Oakwood. And so we do see a lot of demand to get into that community. The average home sale price, again, uh, 360 65,000. So it's a little bit higher, maybe one of the higher ones on the list, 3,500 3, homes in the community total and 17 properties were for sale this morning. Proximity to shopping and entertainment. Again, give it an A plus uh, because it's close to downtown. Uh, so lots of restaurants, lots of things to do downtown. Certainly it's as close as Kettering is to the green. So lots of shopping down there. Overall buyer demand home sales in the last 12 months is 252. I guess you have to put that in uh, perspective, right? If there's only 3,500 homes available in the entire community over the last 12 months, 252 sold. And there's only 17 properties available for sale in all price points uh, this morning. So that's Oakwood. And again, if you're a buyer and you 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 don't know much about the area, Oakwood is, is a special place in that it's a very tight knit community. It, the housing there again is mostly between late 1800s and mid early 1900s. And so this may be a place that you want to explore. The third community we're going to discuss is Beaver Creek. So Beaver Creek is the community I showed you earlier. Uh, you can see Beaver Creek is huge. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Beaver Creek is one of the 
bigger, if not the biggest communities that we'll be discussing today. And Beaver Creek is where the green was located. That's where I was showing you earlier. You can see that shopping center that was down here off Dorothy Lane. Uh, Beaver Creek Schools on the Niche website rated at a B plus on the state's report card. Uh, Beaver Creek Schools have a 94% graduation rate. That's very good. There's 8,000 students in the district. Uh, there's a 20 to one student to teacher ratio. It's a little bit higher than um, both Oakwood or Kettering, but you can see the schools did not rate as highly as uh, either Oakwoods or Kettering's either. Uh, the affordability in Beaver Creek, the average home sale price is $305,000, not terrible. Available housing, there's 20,000 residences in the city of Beaver Creek. And as of this morning, 67 of those were for sale. Proximity to shopping and entertainment, Beaver Creek gets an A plus as well. We're gonna give Beaver Creek an A plus because you know the green is located inside of Beaver Creek and Beaver Creek just has a lot of different shopping and entertainment options. Not to mention, um, if you go up to the north end, the green, as you can see, is, is down here. So the green is, is kind of in the southwest corner of Beaver Creek. And there's also additional shopping up off Fairfield Road. There's a mall up in this area and it's called the Fairfield Mall. And again, you, you're gonna get a lot more shopping, entertainment, movie theaters. It's close to the Nutter Center here where there are a lot of shows that come into town, concerts and so forth. So that's one thing you would wanna keep in mind if you, uh, if you do like those things. But again, Beaver Creek, great place to live based on the housing metrics that we're using here today. Uh, let's see, number four. Number four um, is Springboro. And Springboro is certainly near and dear to my heart. That's where my wife and I and my two sons live. So I'm gonna take you down to Springboro and talk a little bit about that. So Springboro, as you can see, is a little bit further south. Let me just zoom out again so you can see where that is in relationship to downtown Dayton. Dayton is here, Oakwood, Kettering, Beaver Creek, all here, all very centrally located. These communities are a lot closer to downtown Dayton. And so if that's something that's important to you, you may want to keep that in mind. Also, we get a lot of requests. There's a lot of buyers coming into our area that are working at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And let me just show you that because I really probably should have gone through that during the discussion with Beaver Creek. But base, the Air Force Base is actually probably, well, it, it is. It's the largest employer in all of Dayton. So we get a lot of requests for buyers coming into the area to live in Beaver Creek, Kettering, and Oakwood because they work out at the Air Force space. Uh, another cool thing about Beaver Creek is it's close to Wright State, which is uh, a popular college here locally. And I'll zoom in on this a little bit for you and then we'll go back to Springboro. But I just wanted to talk very briefly about this so you understood um, if you are one of those folks who are coming in to work at the Air Force Base, where these different uh, suburbs were located as it relates to if you would be working at the base. So you can see right here, here's the National Museum, U.S. Air Force. A lot of this stuff they won't show on here because it is a military base and I don't think, I don't think Google is allowed or puts those things on their Google Maps uh, just for security purposes. But if you know the base, you know that it starts down here and it literally spans the entire length of 675, which is one of the main thoroughfares going through Beaver Creek and those other areas. That just gives you some context if you're coming in and you're going to be working at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, that Beaver Creek, Kettering, and Oakwood are certainly very close in Springboro, a little bit further away. So let's go back down here. So coming in on Springboro, um, as I said before, uh, my wife and I live in Springboro. We've built three houses here and my wife actually grew up in the Springboro community. And so uh, she knows it very intimately. My Both of my kids, I have a senior, actually my oldest son is going to be a senior this year. My youngest son is going into the eighth grade. So they are in the Springboro school system and absolutely love it. Springboro schools rated an A minus on the state report card. They have a 98% graduation rate, which is excellent. There are 6,300 students in the entire district. There's a 24 to one student to teacher ratio. So one thing I will say about Spring Girl Schools is they are jam packed. Certainly I know they're working on solving some of those issues, but uh, there's a 24 to one student to teacher ratio. But keeping in mind, it's an A minus on the state report card and it's a 98% graduation rate. The affordability average home sale price in Springboro is $387,000. So it's a little on the higher side of the five different communities that we're discussing today. Available housing, there's 6,600 homes available in Springboro proper. And as of this morning, there were 42 properties for sale. Proximity to shopping and entertainment. I'm gonna give it 
initially started out as an A, but I'm actually going to give it A minus. Actually, I'm going to give it a B plus because it is a little bit of a drive to the green. It is a little bit of a drive to Fairfield Mall. It is a little bit of a drive to Cincinnati. It's 40 to 45 minutes to get down to Cincinnati. Now we do have a place that just went in in Miamisburg, which is another suburb of Dayton, and it's called Austin Landing. And I'll show that to you really quickly. It is very similar to the green, which is up in Beaver Creek and Kettering. However, there are not as many options for shopping or entertainment or restaurants at Austin Landing as there are at the green. But I know, again, that's something that they're continuing to work on and to, to build out. Um, so let me just show you, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and show you Austin Landing. So this is Austin Landing right here. There is There are some restaurants. There's a Chewy's in here, which my wife and I love to go to. It's actually right over in this area here. And there's some businesses in here. There's some hotels in here. But again, I don't think in my mind's eye that it is where the green is in terms of shopping and entertainment yet. But again, I do know that that's something that they are continuing to work on and bring businesses and, and entertainment and restaurants in to help fill some of those voids. So Springboro proximity to shopping and entertainment, I'm gonna give it a B plus, but certainly it is uh, improving. Overall buyer demand, home sales in the last 12 months, there were 678 home sales, which again is robust. Uh, we think that's really good. We do see a lot of people relocating into our area and want to live in the Springboro area just because it is centrally located. So if you have two people in the family that work and one of them works down in Cincinnati and one of them works perhaps at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, uh, Springboro is a great way to split that drive for both of those people who will be working at their respective places. Springboro again, um, awesome place. The last community we're going to discuss today, so number five is Centerville. Let me show you that on the map. So here is Centerville here. And just to provide some context, Springboro again down here and Kettering, Beaver Creek, Oakwood here. Kettering, Oakwood, Beaver Creek, Springboro down here. And then this is Centerville. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. One thing before I move on to Centerville, as I had mentioned earlier about the homes in Oakwood and Kettering being a little bit older, the homes in Beaver Creek, the homes in Springboro, many of those homes are newer, especially in Springboro. A lot of the homes in Springboro were built post 1990 and they are still building in Springboro today. So if you do like newer housing, if you like larger lots, you may want to be in the Springboro area. Beaver Creek is a little bit of both. Uh, a lot of Beaver Creek was built in post-1960 era, but Beaver Creek is so large uh, that they are still building in Beaver Creek today. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, if you will. And Centerville is a lot like Beaver Creek. So a lot of Centerville was built post, I would say, 1950. And Centerville is rather large. It's not as big as Beaver Creek, but it is, it is large. And a lot of the houses in Centerville are newer. In fact, they're still building in Centerville today. And so that's one thing you want to keep in mind is if you do like newer housing, you may want to consider Springboro, Centerville, and Beaver Creek as good options for you. I mean, Centerville schools got an A plus on the state's report card. That metric is important. I know for those of you who are bringing children into the district or certainly property values are important to you. Centerville has a 90% graduation rate. There are 8,400 students in the district uh, with an 18 to one student to teacher ratio. Again, really, really good. Available housing. There's 11,000 residences in the, the city of Centerville with 74 properties available for sale as of this morning. I'm gonna give uh, Centerville an A. It's really in the middle of all of these. You can be at the green from Centerville in less than 20 minutes. Same thing with Austin Landing. Maybe Austin Landing is 15 minutes away. It's not a far shot to the city of Dayton or uh, the city of Cincinnati for that matter. So I'm going to give it an A for proximity to shopping and entertainment. Uh, the overall buyer demand. So home sales in the last 12 months, 1,182 homes sold in the last 12 months in Centerville. So overall buyer demand is very healthy there. Uh, we do see a lot of people who move into the area. Also, they want to live in the center of a Washington Township area. It is one of the reasons we included it in our video today. So that concludes uh, the five best suburbs for 
the city of Dayton. Um, and again, those were based on metrics that we chose uh, that we thought might be important to home buyers that were moving into the area. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. And there you have it, the five best suburbs in Dayton, Ohio. Hey, hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, make sure and hit the subscribe button below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be notified every time we release a new video about living in the Dayton area. Keep in mind, whether you're moving in the next nine days or 90, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call in the link below. We'd be happy to help you make the smooth move to Dayton.